okay. I'm down here in uh, Waterford uh, in Dungarvan with Morris O'Donnell. A lot of people would know Morris from the one lot races. He's really uh, made himself a name being very, very, very consistent in the one lot races. We'll just ask Morris how he actually got involved <coughs> uh, with the pigeons and when he started and things like that, Morris. So when did, when did you start in the pigeons? Keeping pigeons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Keep, Jesus, yeah. when I was five years of age, my father introduced. So your he, father raised pigeons, did he? Oh, yeah, yeah. Did he? Yeah, yeah. And how did he do back then? Oh, it was just small club racing and, you know, nobody. Still, they had to be won. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you just win that and were you successful? Was he, he... he was, yeah. He was, he actually, his, his first loft was actually two tea chest boxes. Unbelievable, isn't it? Compared? Hanging up on, on the back wall. And then we extended into the, um, as all the corporation houses had at the time, they had a coal shed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. So we extended into the cold shed and had a bit of an aviary out the side of it. And he raised pigeons from Torso in Scotland. And into them? Into, into the and cold the sky, shed. So you know what I mean? You see the flashy lofts that's there now and we're all struggling to get pigeons from the distance. And That's probably the main problem. <laughs> Janie, yeah. But uh, yeah, so you move on. Then when did you get racing on your own? Um... First time I raced on my own, I think I was nine. Raced on your own at nine yeah. years of age. And I started... Oh, did your dad, your dad stop racing? No, he was helping me. But he was he was after becoming ill at the time. And he he, he was um he was out out from work and everything. And he was he was kind of mentoring me telling me what yeah, to do but yeah, yeah, yeah. and did you win any races when you were nine years of age yeah the first the first race i entered i won oh yeah but i was disqualified why was that because they said it was an improbable or an improbable velocity yeah, it was a race from kildare back down here to dungarvan it was 79 miles was the distance we were flying 79 miles and so many yards. Yeah. And the pigeon, I clocked the pigeon in 58 minutes. Jeez, I, I, I agree with them. The pigeon must have got out or something. No. Uh, yeah. That's why they disqualified me. And I can remember when I came back up from the clubhouse and I said it to my father. He went down like a raven lunatic, given out. Mm. And... And I remember he brought me back up and he says, don't worry, he said. He said, we'll do the same next week. And yeah. next week, the same youngster from Kildare again uh, flew in 56 minutes. Genie, um, <laughs> a check, a check pie youngster. So, I'll never uh, forget you it. You know what I mean? I thought the record speed of a pigeon was about 82 miles an hour. You know what I mean? That one of yours is obviously doing a lot more than that. You know about I mean? eighty-two, I think, was it? Yeah, something around eighty-two. Mm. Seventy-nine miles, something. and she did it in. But anyway, uh, so then you move on, and then uh, where do you, where do you at? Then you get older. Did you stay yeah. in the pigeons? Get out of the. Pigeons? I was in and out because I I I moved to um, England, and I was working in England for a long time. I was working here first in in. In the, the uh, bars, pubs, I was running a, a big cabaret hall here. And then I, I moved over to the UK and I was a landlord in different pubs over in the UK. So you're a well-travelled man. And then, obviously, you, were, you didn't keep pigeons in England, so... No, no, no. But I used to always... I used to be always walking around looking up at the sky. And if you, if you saw a, a flock of... Pigeons passing, the, no. you know, it would get you excited. You'd be wondering where, what, what direction they're heading and who's racing them and all that. And, Unbelievable, yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, you're true. It's true what you said. I remember a lad saying it to me one day, he said, Jerry, why do, uh, pigeon men never find any money? And I said, <laughs> yes, they're, I don't. they're always looking up in the air. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah. So, 
then you obviously come back from uh, England then. Yeah, yeah, and and I um, started racing here. My, what year was that? Oh, Jesus, is a good, good long time ago. I remember my brother, Tommy, uh, he was also into the pigeons, and he was the secretary of the Munster Fed at the time. And when I came back from England, he was on to me, oh, Morris, why don't you? Go back into the pigeons, and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I ended up actually, and I built a loft in, and I went back into it, and started racing on the North Road on the monster fin on your own, yeah, or with him? yeah, on, on my own. He uh, had his own loft. I had my. And what loft. pigeons were you racing back then? I'd be honest with you. Were, all the pigeons we lost in Dublin. Probably, <laughs> yeah. No, we used to avoid the Dublin ones. <laughs> yeah. We'd wait up the NIPA came down and then we'd try and catch a few strays. Oh, unbelievable. I think everybody, a lot of people started that way, didn't they? That's the way it was in the old days, you know. So then we move on forward again and uh, did you get back out with them again and back into them or what um, did you do? No, I've had them since then, the whole time. But I was I was working in the food business, and there was um, I remember there's a guy uh, that owned a, a, a food company, and I used to buy stuff off him. And he got married, and he had his honeymoon in Sun City. Very good. Yeah. And when he came back from his honeymoon, he bought me back a present of a T-shirt, and the crest of the million dollar race was on it. Yeah. And I was saying to myself, what the, what's this million dollar race? You know, I've uh, never heard of it. And then months later, I think we started getting the magazines, the 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 home award and things like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw an advert for the the million dollar race. And I said, Jesus, I I I I'd love to um have a pigeon that would be good enough to Race in the yeah, to race in the million dollar, and that's when I contacted you. Yeah, and and that was a very important phone call. Look at you <laughs> now, you're famous. Yeah. And I remember I met you then up in the Dublin show. I think it was Syndicate Laughs, uh, auction. Peter, Peter Fox's auction. Yeah, the Dublin could show. have been. Yeah, 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 it actually was. Yeah, because the Teofilio cock I bought was. A zero nine cock. So that would have been that year, yeah. When I met you in Dublin, because I wanted to find out more about the the race and how would I get the pigeons up. And I think I said, I think I said to you, well, if you want to get interest in the million dollar, you need some of the pigeons that I'm auctioning today. And you think uh, you bought a few, didn't you? I did, day? yeah, you yeah. Few, and you? I was lucky enough. I remember I was I was I was. I think you asked me to give you a hand. In behind the the pens, handing the pigeons out mm. to 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 people, and I remember coming across this cock, the Teofilio cock, and I said, "Jesus, look at him!" I, I saw him in the pen, <coughs> and the only way I could describe him was if if he was kind of the Mike Tyson of the compared to the rest of the uh, the boards of the pen. Yeah. So so I handled him and Jesus, I said he was what I noticed about him is he had a huge broad chest. Mm -hmm. Now he'd 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 short flights and a short tail, and people will always tell you, oh long distance pigeons have long flights and a long tail and they're all just theories to come They're all shape. theories, yeah. They come in so, all shapes and sizes. I was lucky I got him. And I got another couple, and at the time I was after buying pigeons from a guy in Belgium called Josh Dewson. And it was just a, a, an accident that one of the hens I bought from Joss, she made it up to the Teofilio cock. Yeah. And then that year when I sent to, I sent a team of three as it was at the time to South Africa, I think I lost two and I'd won going to the final and it was off of that pairing. And I can remember, <coughs> I think there was only 40-odd pigeons home on the day. Yeah. 
It's four hundred miles back then. The yeah. million dollar, four hundred and ten actually. Yeah, and and it was early the following morning. Um, my daughter called me. and She said, "Dad, your phone is ringing." I said, "Jesus, who's ringing me this hour of the morning?" And it was you on the phone to tell me that the pigeon was after clocking in. I think it was a hundred and tenth place. Yeah. And. Uh, so that you were on your bike then? I was on my bike, and the, the next year, <coughs> I said, we have something here, so I, the following year, made it back to the same cock. So I floated the first two sets of eggs off them, and yeah. I left them rare, the third set. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm going to send two teams to South Africa, and they'd be all did. siblings, but one of the eggs was blank. So I had only five off of that pairing. Yeah. So I picked another youngster, sent him, and I think he went down in hotspot wound or something. But the, all the other five siblings, and they all clocked in the final. Yeah. And one of them, his name was Panicky Pete. He actually won the... Yeah, very good pigeon. Uh, uh, what did they call it? He won the Cascade Challenge. Cas yeah, that was sort of like a DTW. He had yeah. to win... Uh, you had to win the actual forced, race, yeah. Forced open, yeah. I think there was just that under 5,000 in it. Yeah, I think uh, I remember that morning. It was actually... The Dublin show was on the same yeah. day when you won Again, it, yeah. And I, I remember you telling me that you met Paul Smith um, the night before. What and the, you said to Paul, time. what do you think for tomorrow? And Paul Smith said to you, panicky Pete. Because he had been 11th the previous week. And I think he was 6th or 7th the week before that again. Really so, good pigeon, yeah. So he was he was knocking on the door. And I think I told you he, he'd be too fast for his own good for the final. And he still ended up in the result in the final. He, he was my first one back out of the five in yeah. the final, yeah. 116th, I think. Pretty good. A super pigeon, you know. <coughs> when you really consistent pigeons like that, uh, they don't really show in the final. But what my experience was, they didn't show. They were too quick for their own good. They didn't put a fair play to panicky P. So you, you got five out of the six home from the final in that race off that uh, hen and the Teophilia. Five, off, five out of five. Five out of five. five 100% strike rate. Super going, super going. Did you uh, sell the hen later on, on Pippa, your beloved Pippa? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. And she made a lot of money. Did she 10 grand or something like that? 10 she, grand, yeah, at the time. Sure, it was that, a lot of money. That was a lot of money, yeah, right? I can't remember you giving me that now or that. But that, <laughs> that, that I can remember um, the guy from Pippa, the agent, and he rang me and he said, would I sell both the parents? And I said, no. I said, I'd sell one. Mm -hmm. So we actually met him. He came over to Ireland and we met him and I left him handle the two pigeons and I, I said, I'm only selling one of them. And he said, um, that, that um, okay, he said, we will sell the hen. But he was after telling somebody afterwards, he said, if the hen makes a lot of money, he said, he said, there's a good chance that Morris might sell the cock as well. Yeah, yeah, it was kind of meted to his madness, but I, I wouldn't. I, yeah, I, I yeah. kept the cock for years afterwards. Yeah, you done well. You had another pigeon as well from was it Josh Jusons as well that you sold as well on Pippa and got ten grand for that as well. That's right, yeah. When I when I when I went over to Joss and I bought ten youngsters off him, <coughs> and when I was coming away that day, he called me out to the earring loft. Yeah. And he taught me to have a look at the young ones or the, the yearlings and I handled a few of them and blah, blah, blah. And he said, what do you think? And I said, geez, there's a beautiful cock there. He was a, a pencil blue with a bit of white on his throat. And he's, he said, uh, okay, he said, take for a present for me buying the ten. Yeah. And I brought him home and I used to always be on the internet then on the Pippa side watching the, the results of the internationals. Yeah. And next thing I spotted that Josh Jusen was after winning the international from Marseille. Very good, yeah. And next thing they put up the pedigree of the pigeon. Yeah. And I looked and I said, Jesus, that's very familiar. So I went and grabbed my case and I rooted through all my pedigrees. And I had the Nest brother was the 
present are just given. <laughs> just your luck, you fell yeah. into a swamp, you come out in the suit, you know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? But, uh, so, um, he was the first one I saw it on paper. He made 10 grand as well. With 9,800, I think. Unbelievable money, you know. So, uh, so At that's, the time that's, it was, yeah. Yeah, no doubt about it. So then you, uh, you were fairly successful. Then you started in some of the other one lap races, did you? Yeah, yeah. I start. I I entered a good a good lot. I I, I like to you know you, different challenges and yeah. Different. Well, you always got your share, didn't you? You know what I mean. You always got your share. Now I think somebody counts a lot there lately. I think I'm after entering somewhere about between fifty five and sixty one lot races over the years, and I've only failed to get into the prize money woods. Just some going, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really. And what do you put that down to? I remember you saying it to me before. You know what I mean for the uh, for them race, especially in the heat in Africa and the Algarve there, that you need distant pigeons. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's and, that's what I think. That's what I believe in. Yeah. Because like spring pigeons in in you know the likes of Africa, the likes of the Algarve places like that, and the Algarve especially because it's normally. They race from northern Portugal down to the south. Yeah. And normally at that time of the year, the wind is southern. Yeah. So it's a headwind. Head wind way, yeah. Plus, it's normally around 30 degrees. Yeah. So a headwind with extreme heat. You I need the pigeons I, I don't stay think, on the wing. Yeah. yeah. I remember there one year there when we were there and... Uh, I think it was about 12, 12 in the money or something. 12 in the, in the prize money. That yeah, was and, unbelievable. And, and the first night. That was unbelievable. Because I think we checked, didn't we? You had more positions. Than the, whole of than the whole of Belgium. Yeah. And Belgium own. had 10. Yeah, and you had 12 in the money. You bred. They, they were not obviously all for you. You bred them for some other people, did you? You know? No, I was in syndicates with other people. Yeah, yeah, I, but I I bred them all. Oh yeah, you bred every one of the pigeons. Yeah, well, that is good, good going, and you know what I mean. The, you had, uh, good results then in the million dollar race as well. You know, you've never failed to get into prizes. In the yeah, there was uh, the, um, the year after the five, maybe it was two years or three years after I can't remember. Mm. I sent an, a pair of nest mates. Remember, they were yeah. forty, yeah, forty fourth and forty sixth. I think, yeah, I think 43rd and 44th they were, yeah. You gave one of them to Rui, Rui. who owns the Algarve race, yeah, the, uh, for his syndicate, and uh, you kept one of them for yourself and the two of them. It was a real hard race as well. And I think that did the two, the two of them come the next morning, didn't they? I think they were the four, first two pigeons the next morning. My memory serves me right, in, could have uh, been, in, yeah, in the million dollar race, yeah. So you've got a, a good, um record in that and then uh as you said you know we got to meet Rui and uh you've been entering there and being very successful in Rui's race yeah from day road. one from the first year he started it was um a friend of mine sent it on to me um Henny Kelly Muir in Dublin South African man. yeah and he he's he sent me on this because I hadn't met Henny a few times before at different races we were over one year at the europa over in england um oh, yeah. derek nichols's race yeah yeah and we yeah. met henny and we had a good good old time over there and next thing henny messaged me and he said what do you think of this race he said have a look at this and have a look at the loft he said the setup so i rang henny and i said geez i said it looks good i said would we have a go and he mm. said uh, yeah he said he said if you if you're going to send a team he said i'll send a team so which we did, yeah. and that was that was the first year, and then I think Rui came over to Dublin. Yeah, the Dublin show the show. next year, yeah, and that's where he asked me to be agent, and we're yeah. doing it since. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a, it's a very good race, uh, Rui's race, isn't it? Yeah, 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 I love it. Well, it's it's because of the area. That the lot that manager, the lot manager, and I've said it time and time again, he's absolutely fantastic. He is the control. Them pigeons go from walking around on that grass when they come out of the loft for the first time, and again he gets them training. 
you could count the amount of people that would la- land in the grass. And um, that's the early stages of trying it. But the final, to see them pigeons pitch out of the air, I remember one year it was nearly dark, and I think about five pigeons come together, and they see they were like arrows out with the sky they were. And unbelievable, you know what I mean? He's, he's just a fantastic uh, pigeon man, yeah. uh, he is. He really and, is. And, and when they hit the board, they actually run yeah, into the loft. The pigeons are racing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember one year over, I think it was what year, well, I forget what year it was. You'd, um, there was 10 pigeons dropped together in the Algarve race, and uh, you owned it. one of them. I think, what, what position did you? Um, ninth with a pigeon called. I sold him afterwards, and the guy named him Sapsan. His picture is up there. Yeah. Um, but there's another race on as well in the Algar. Yeah, the, the, the Derby. The derby race, yeah. And the Derby was on on the Friday, the yeah. final. And the gold and the big race was on on the Saturday. Yeah. And we went down to the Derby race on the Friday because I, had, I put a team in that as well. <coughs> and it was down there that 10 pigeons came together. I had one in it and he went in in seven place. Seven place. The I know following day in the, in the golden race, 10 came together again and I had one in the drop and that was Sapson and he went in ninth. So, so in the space of 24 hours, I got you a couple of seconds. Well, look on your side, you could have won the two races. Won the two pigeon. races, yeah. Because obviously the flying speed of your pigeon was the exact same as the winner. It's just a matter of what way they ran into the loss. That was really, really um, a great achievement it was, you know. Um, yeah, that you could have won the two races. and uh, But you've been very consistent ever since. What other... What other uh, prizes stand out for you where you win? Oh, the, the, um, the um, Pigeon Miss Morris in the in the million dollar race. Again, yeah. The yeah. last million dollar race that was... I can't imagine. <laughs> I, can't, I still can't believe that. Yeah. You know what I mean? I really feel sorry. And at the beginning, I was defending the million dollar race because I believed in my heart she, she was going to pay out. And then when she didn't, you know what I mean? You know, words can't describe the woman, you know, what she done and all the people, you know. But uh, unfortunately, that was Miss Morris's year. She won uh, the, the knockout the knockout competition. Yeah, she So she the, was the best board over the five hotspots and the final combined. Yeah, she she really she really done well. She that was the year Sean Hunt won the card as well, fifty thousand he should have got. And so. we had the uh, we had the nomination for the car on Miss Morris as well, and she was the second one. Was it? So if yeah. Sean Hunt didn't clock his one, we'd have won the car as well. Yeah, yeah. Probably. And in hindsight, it's probably just yeah, as well we didn't. Because there was a lot of money, you know what I mean? It, it was really sickening, it was, you know what I mean? What really happened, you know what I mean? It was, you know, people owed money, including myself. Uh, but what can you do? We just had to move on from it. Yeah. Then the potato race come along and uh, I got you to enter that and you done very, very well in that as well, didn't you? Yeah, I, I, it was last year, wasn't it? Yeah. It was the last year. Last year, yeah. Last and, year. and, yeah, because the final is on just after Christmas. Yeah, it's on just, just the, the yeah. week before Blackpool, yeah. The, the week before. And that's why I, I, when you said it to me, I said, yeah, I'll definitely enter it because that's the same time of the year as the million dollar race you thought was beyond. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I knew when the million dollar race was gone, I said, at least we have an alternative here. And yeah. as it turned out, it's it's a freaking spectacular race. Oh, it's, it's huge. It's great. It is. It and is, yeah. and um, I, I sent the team and I ended up Finishing was it fifty third, fifty fourth, yeah, fifty third, fifty fourth, yeah, or fifty fifty third and fifty sixth was it, yeah, and yeah. that's I won the team prize. It's there and uh, yeah, lovely trophy you got and a good lot of money as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. I think I got about twelve or fourteen grand in total. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Yeah, that, but it was a really really good. I think uh, Andy Morden had the four stars. He had the first, first Irish pigeon, pigeon yeah, yeah, and. He done really well in that. And, 
Sean Hunt, in fairness, Sean... Uh, just Sean like, got three, and he couldn't believe the prize money yeah, he remember, got. I remember ringing Sean about it, and I, I said, he got 200, 204, and 200 and third. And I says, what prize money do you think you're entitled? I suppose a couple of hundred, Sean says. Right now, he says, you've got seven and a half grand coming with the three prizes. He couldn't believe it, you know. So it was good money, and I think it was a good, real good race as well. I think it's going to be a race that's going to keep building and building. I remember Jared Koopman telling me about it a good few years before that. I was over in Africa for the million dollar, and he asked me to get involved, and I, I, I didn't really want that at the time and he rang me when I come home he said think about it and I didn't but then I did get involved in the race as well and it, it's it's great to be actually involved in real good races you know what I mean the two races that I'm involved with is the Algarve Golden Race and the Batea and are the two best races I think in the world by far I think you know what I mean There's well the Algarve is the biggest uh, probably the best race in Europe and then yeah. you have the Batea yeah. Probably the biggest, best race in the world. Yeah, well, I tell you one thing, the Algarve is there as well, and uh, it's a kick in the arse between the two of them at the moment. The price yeah. money that uh, Rui has put up, a million, I remember saying it to Rui a few years ago about he should try to be the first million uh, euro race in, in Europe. And in fairness to him, he did, and he did, and uh, it's been very successful. Yeah, there's massive one. prize money this year. Like, he's yeah. paying out 1.1 1. 1 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you'll be looking. Will you be looking for a share of that? Well, hopefully, but <laughs> it's, everybody's bubble is going to burst someday. So, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you have as good a chance as any and better than most, you know. I think even your ma the lad in America, um, Martin Ward, you bred a couple of pigeons for him in uh, last year's Algarve race, yeah, and, and, and he, 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 he won a good lot of money, didn't he? he? Did, I, yeah, I was delighted yeah. for him because. He sort of came through me to get the pigeons uh, off you to enter, and then well, what did he win? He won. He won a good few quid, didn't he? He and did, he, and what we did, what I organised for the Irish lads was um, a, a nomination. Remember, a, a twenty euro and a fifty euro nomination yeah. for anybody that wanted to go into it. Um, so the first pigeon back that was nominated would win the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Martin nominated one of the pigeons that I bred from, and he won it. I think it was about six grand in it, wasn't so it? Right? It was good money in it. Yeah, I think it was a twenty and a fifty euro pool. Pool, yeah. yeah. If and, my and, memory serves me right, yeah. And so you bred that as well, and you had a few other pigeons that you bred in the prices as well, didn't you? Oh yeah, yeah. I think I did eight. Oh yeah, I forget what I forget what the number was. Well, you you put it down, the, you know what I mean? You want pigeons with distant breeding behind them to do uh, to do the that type of racing, you know? That's what I think, because, like, uh, it, they haven't left me down so far. Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. And you see, uh, we nearly forgot to tell people that uh, Mike Gann has actually bought Miss Morris after the million-dollar race. So she's out there in America. She is. Um, she and she's right. already after breeding four youngsters to win major prizes in one last race as far Mike. Yeah, I think she. I think she bred two in 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 the halls here, and like there's, there's loads of other one last races in America that Mike joins, and he also goes to the Pattaya, all those races, Victoria Falls <coughs> races like that. And then he, he went on and he bought your pigeon from uh, Pattaya, Pattaya yeah. race as well. So so that's two of Mike, Mike Gannis has belongs to you. So when, uh, when you see people like that buying your pigeons, you know what I mean? The, well, the likes a, of them a people. compliment. Yeah, of course, a big compliment it is because Mike Gannis is probably the best one-lap racer in the world, you know what I mean? And uh, when he's buying your pigeons, you've arrived, you know what I mean? Yeah. And... Uh, it's great, you know what I mean. It's great for you to be able to say, you know what I mean, that um, my I sold auction some of these pigeons in in um, Dublin, and the always went well. They did through Peter Fox, um, and uh, yeah, really good pigeons. So, um, so you're looking forward now to this year's race. You have your pigeons away in a lot of the races now, have you? Well, I've only uh, they're in the Algarve. 
there in Pattaya. I have a good lot in the Algarve. I think there's about 50 or 50 of my pigeons in the Algarve. And I think there's 30 or 40, is it, in Pattaya? You should be telling you a lie if I tried to... Uh, How many was in the... T six, six, five, 30, I think. 30, that's so good. So, you know what I mean? <coughs> uh, that's good. So I'm sure we'll see our uh, name around. Maybe, maybe more as we'll get a look at some of these quality pigeons you have uh, that... Um, are breeding all these are responsible for all these results you have and i know there's lots of other races that you've uh won medals gold medals and things in uh as well and you? you know what i mean oh yeah yeah, yeah. You, you've won the uh, uh, gold medals in a good few different races haven't yeah you? I, I, it was um a race in the uk the who dares wins race i won two gold medals in that and i won the what is it? Uh, the two pigeons. Not the two board average. Two board average. Yes. I was fourth and sixth in the final from France up to wherever, yeah. wherever the, the middle of England. And I won. Oh, God. <laughs> Everywhere. Um, another, there was another race I used to enjoy was the French Young Bird Derby. Well, you're doing a well guy, that, really yeah, well. a guy called John McGee and yeah. his wife Lou McGee used to run that. Yeah, I remember. And the reason I like that so much is they would train the pigeons themselves, all the training tosses mm -hmm. and the hotspots. But for the final, they were sent with the Federation yeah. in France. Mm -hmm. And there could be anything up to 10,000 birds in it. Yeah. Flying to all different directions in France. So a good, real good test. Yeah. A good test. So the pigeons that did well in that race, mm -hmm. I think myself they were outstanding because in all other one loft races, when they when they release the pigeons, they're all flying back to one loft. But with that one, they were being pulled everywhere. So it took good pigeons to yeah, to, to do well, in it, yeah. <coughs> to do well in the jet. Well. Did you do? Did you were you in the result in Sean Hunt's uh, race? Sean Hunt's race, yeah. I was third in that. Well, was it third or second? Well, third. Was it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was Carl Donnelly. He bred a pigeon for one of his mates. He finished second. Second. That's, that's right. right yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. I forget who won the race. Who won the race that year? I forget. I forget. So you, Carl, was uh, second, and you were third. Third. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's that's really good, and. Um, as and I that said, was, and and the winner, the first prize for the winner in that one was fifty grand. Fifty grand, yeah, some money. It was right, huge it money. It was yeah. the biggest payout in Ireland or the UK ever for for a one laughter race. Yeah, yeah. super. And uh, the the Algarve race that we're talking, I think the winner get the winner. I don't think I know the winner's getting two hundred thousand. Two hundred thousand, yeah, and I think 000. it's. Down to four hundred prizes. Five, five, yeah, five, right down. Uh, even even the um, there's there's three hot spots. Then you have the semi final. Then you have the final. The three hot spots, which are relatively short distance. The winner of each of them gets a car or ten grand. It's grand, isn't it? Yeah. Then the winner of the semi final. It's 50 grand. It's unbelievable, yeah. Plus down to, I think it's 300 positions again, something like that. I'm not too sure. It's, it's on the website anyway, if anybody wants to check it. Yeah. Uh, Is there anything, I'll just ask you, so maybe someone can learn something here today. Is there anything you do with your young ones be, before you sent them out to these races? You know what I mean? In preparation, what age do you reckon the young ones be? And things like that i know? don't like i don't like to send them too young yeah that's it so I, I don't I, I like to send them when they're about um two months old nah, nah, nah. because then at least when they're put in a, 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 a section with a, other pigeons um at least they're able to fend for themselves at yeah. that stage do you um Treat them for anything before they go, or do you uh, yeah, vaccinate, vaccinate them. them as well? Vaccinate, 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 vaccinate. And I use a vaccine for salmonella called Salgin. 
And I notice since I started using that, my results have got better. I think my the young birds they become more robust. Yeah, yeah. Once you give it to them, should you go back in ten days later and handle the same young ones, and you think they're 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 different, they're more robust than. Unbelievable. I, I, it's just it, it it works for me. So as the fellow says, if something isn't broken, yeah, yeah why try and fix it? Miss Morris would probably be your best result ever, would it, in the one lot race? Miss Morris, uh, I would imagine. I suppose pr prize money wise, yeah, if if we had got paid, but unfortunately that didn't happen. I, I so it would have been actually, yeah, because she's that, well up in the result as well, aren't she? In she was twenty second, I think, yeah, in the that's, finals. That's but that that year alone, we went back in and looked at it afterwards. <clears throat> For some reason, they 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 changed the program from the million dollar. Because when I when I joined it first, they'd go a certain distance, then you had a hot spot, then they might go another little bit of distance, then you'd have the next hot spot, and so on and so yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that year, all they had was thirty mile trainers. Yeah. Then they'd go to hot spot one, then they'd come back thirty mile trainers again, mm. then on to hot spot two. Mm -hmm. So they weren't gradually building up the distance. Yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> and we look back on the results, and there was two of those thirty mile trainers that Miss Morris didn't clock on the day. Unbelievable. Whether she stayed out or she was missing. Maybe she we, get into the lab without going over the path. Maybe. But if she had clocked in those two races, she would have won the grand averages. She would be probably next in line after Bordy. Bordy was some pigeon, yeah, he definitely was some pigeon. We actually never mentioned uh, what breed uh, uh, Miss Morris was, what way she was bred. She's um, another guy, like I said, when I bought the pigeons off of Josh Juice, and I used to always be on the internet looking the for his runs in the internationals to see how he was getting on. And next thing I noticed, this name coming up the whole time, Van Oakwork slash Deckers. So I used to scroll down through them, and then I went back into previous races. And here was their name again. And I said, Jesus, who, who are these people, you know? Yeah. And they, I think they actually race in the same club as, as Josh Jusen. Mm -hmm. And... So I went back to, I didn't know how to use the computer. I think I got my daughter or something to show me, mm -hmm. to teach me. And I went back into the previous year's results and I, I saw just our names the whole time popping up. So I said, hang on a second. I'm just, what type of race were these? You're talking about, you're seeing their name popping up. The internationals from yeah. Marseille, Pepignan, Barcelona, and Barcelona, they're flying. 1100 kilometers. So there you go. The, it was distant pigeons. Distant pigeons, pigeons yeah. that you were chasing after the, with the intentions of the one lot races, thinking yeah. about the one lot races. And I remember I, I, I bought six young ones off them and I had them here and three cocks and three hens and I made them up. And the first round of youngsters, I sent them to the Algarve. Yeah. <coughs> There was six youngsters off of these Van Deckers. I said, I, I, I'll, I'll try these. And I clocked the six of them in the final. And three of them were in the prize money. So I said, <laughs> that's a good start. Yeah, so yeah. now we'll, we'll continue with these. And um, fair play, it was, the, I think it was the following year. I got an email from them. And they said to me, have you still got um, the, this hen? And they with the ring number 045 and I just emailed back and I said yeah of course I have I said why and they said uh, her father is just after winning the national ace pigeon from Barcelona three years in a row okay now yeah uh, and they were after calling him um, pigeon at Paco Barcelona so she 
then was the mother of Miss Morris. There you go. Good pigeons are good pigeons, yeah. you know what I mean? Uh, uh, definitely, yeah. Um, and you still have that hen now, haven't you? You're yeah, yeah. I was her. lucky to get her back because what happened was uh, a, a friend of ours made me an offer for the two pigeons and, and um, I accepted it. And he kept them and he bred. That was Carl Donnelly, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, Jackpot Loves. Yeah. And he, he, I hope Carl doesn't mind us oh, yeah. <laughs> talking. And uh, he bred a good few off, off the pair. And then he sold them on another website. Mm. And <clears throat> they had to be sent to, in, put into quarantine. Mike Gannis bought them as well. At the Mike Gannis bought both of them, the cock and the hen. Yeah. But Mike has um, a loft in Holland, or a friend of his. Peter Cowan, I would imagine, probably. Probably, yeah. And he, he asked the guy, would he collect the pigeons and bring him to his loft until such a time as he could arrange transport over to America? <coughs> so the guy did. But next thing, he rang the auction site after about two months. Mm -hmm. And he said... The, the, the hen pigeon, the 045, that she won't lay. Yeah. So, Carol, um, the auction side rang Carol, and Carol said, Look, if they're not happy with the pigeon, refund them the, uh, the money. And he said, I'll take the pigeon back. And that's what Carol did. And he had her up in his loft for about a month. And I kind of made it, I said, Carol, I said, bring her back down to me, back into the loft, I said, where she was always laying and there was never a problem. <coughs> so got Carol agreed. I think I remember telling you to put her on barley for a long oh, time, give her a half an ounce of barley because she was mud fat, wasn't she? Yeah, you know? when I took her out of the box, when Carol handed it to me, I said, Jesus, Carol, what are they after doing to the pigeon? She was just, she was swollen. She was so fat. They must have just hopper fed her in the, Mm. in the quarantine because there was a delay remember with Karen's auction I don't know was it the quarantine yeah, procedure or something window, yeah. but I'd say she must have been just hopper fed and, and with all the, the wrong type of food so you uh, put her on a half an ounce of barley for a while and then paired her for up about, for about a month Yeah, and I paired her up and I could see that she was she was still carrying a bit of weight so I said I had her in one of the single pens and I said, geez, I had a, um, a spare division. It's about um, 12 by 10 that I use sometimes for the youngsters. <clears throat> and I brought her up and I put her in there with the cock. And I put a ball on the ground. And I took no notice. And about five or six days later, I, I saw her in the ball and it just went in. And I grabbed her and I just checked her. And... I rang Carl straight away and I said, Carl, you're not going to believe it. I said, I said, I told you I'd sort that hen. I said, she's going to lay it tomorrow night. And Carl said, ah, go away. He said, you're playing. I said, I'm not. I'm telling you she's going to lay. Mm -hmm. And uh, the following day, I went out and I waited and I, I sat in the hallway because I could see her going to the nest again. And I sat in the hallway and I took out my phone and I started recording. And I recorded her laying the egg. And I sent the video on to Carl. He couldn't believe it. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So he got, I got, um, I floated those eggs and she went back down again. So I got another pair off her. But then I was weaning off youngsters and I brought them up into the section and I, I was giving them heavier food. Mm -hmm. And it's, I, she must have put the weight back on again, but she just stopped again laying. Yeah. Uh so I have her separated yeah. now with the last month and I leave How her. many youngsters have you got from her? Four? I, I got four this year. Ah, oh, but I have plenty sisters and brothers of Miss Morris. And maybe I'll ask you here on camera, maybe one of them four youngsters, you'll give it to me to put up to give people a chance to uh, get it. I could put it up on Facebook for you and uh, whether it's a hen or a cock, get a match pair and we could do uh, a match pair on Facebook. Uh, there, would you be prepared to do that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. See no if, any, if anybody's had to go and uh, watch the video. 
So it's still, uh, we will have that pair in the next, uh, or not long no. after the video comes out. Um, but there's another uh, another breed then that I oh, bought. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. Again, to, to, distant to, pigeons. But I couldn't believe dist this. Distances. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I remember you telling me about it. No, why would pigeons fly that distance? Well, you tell us about them, yeah. It was, it was, I was on the internet looking at something on, on YouTube, and you know the way all the things come up at the side, the links. Yeah. I spotted this fella outside a pigeon loft. So I clicked on it and it was a video. But it was in Polish. Because he, he's from Poland. But there were subtitles underneath it. And I was reading the subtitles as I was watching the video. <coughs> and it said about the pigeon winning the race from 2,811 kilometers. Yeah. I nearly fell off the chair. Yeah. I couldn't believe and I said, no way, and next thing, once I had, was after clicking on that, then there was all other videos of the same fella came up again. Mm -hmm. So I googled his name and went into it, and there was a story up about him, and I started reading it, and it was fascinating. It was, it was actually his grandfather was in the military, Polish military, yeah. during the war, and he was in charge of looking after the carrier pigeons that used to deliver the messages. Yeah. So when the war finished, he brought some of the pigeons home with him. And he would just keep them as pets inside in a, a shed. Yeah, whatever, yeah. And then Rogala, his father, then took over the pigeons when the grandfather passed away. Yeah. And he kept them. But they were just all... And they were breeding and there was no rings on them and things like that. And eventually then, young Rogala himself, he got involved in the pigeons. And he started reading up about um, racing and all that in Poland. Yeah. So he joined the, 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 the Polish Union and he got his rings and he started ringing some of the young ones and started racing them. And... They've done really well. Some of the did. I know it was one race there. They brought them to Scotland and uh, Edinburgh in Scotland. Yeah. And let them out. They let. There was a race there back to Poland and uh, yeah. Uh, did he win that or was he second or something? I know he did that pigeon major. What was that the race that major? Major no major was in the race. He sent. He sent. He clocked three in the race from Lisbon in Portugal. Back to Poland. That's the race that was 200, uh, 2,800 kilometers. Two two thousand uh, 2011, was it? No? What, what the distance? Yeah. No, 2,811 kilometers. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Which I think is about 1,700 miles. Is it 1,800 miles? Something like that. We had to work it out. And but did some go on? So you then taught the one lap races again. We get a few of these and a few of these because and when I bought them in, fellas, fellas were were mates of mine were ringing me. They said, "Jesus, Morris, you mad? They're only homers and blah blah blah." And I said, "Lads, you're forgetting the uh, the fundamental point here." I said, "When you send pigeons to one after races to compete, I said they're only six months old. Uh, uh, uh. By the time they're in the final, so you need pigeons with a." A good home and ability. Oh, yeah, there you have it. Yeah. Now, if 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 in the final of these races, if there's a tailwind, I'd say your goose is probably cooked. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. most of them, as you know yourself, like the Algarve, yeah, yeah. places like that, there's but always a headwind. But in fairness to them, in the uh, your first pigeon in the potato race last year. Was off of was off one the, of them. One of yeah, you know a daughter I mean? off a daughter of major. Yeah, daughter of major and, and a grandson of Elsa. You know what I mean. So that's a very very well bred pigeon from that's able to fly whatever of two thousand plus kilometers, and still and that was it wasn't the hardest race in the world. The Bataya won the final last no, year. They no. had a help. I think still, they had a helping win, did they? They did. Yeah, and that pigeon. From them, we got the pigeons still managed, so it's a good combination. So, and you have one direct from major as well. Maybe if you get one from major paired to uh, that daughter of uh, major, yeah, daughter of major paired to 
one from the mother of Miss Morris would be a nice match pair for someone to uh, set well, themselves up. <clears throat> what I have is when Mike bought Miss Morris, previously he was after buying a pigeon called Marple that won the Victoria Falls race by an hour. Mm. And that's nearly a 400 mile race. Yeah. And Marple is bred down from a pigeon called Romario. Now, Romario was also the grandfather to the pigeon that won the Alga. Win, win the Alga, a pigeon called Thomas Six. And I think he was the grandfather of another pigeon that won it the following year. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. So, so the breeding is there. You might put one of them off of Miss Morris and Marple up for auction. And I bought him. Yeah. And I have him here. Now, I have him mated to the mealy hen off a major. Super breeding, yeah. So, if you I put a one off them and one off the mother of Miss Morris, Miss Morris, it'd yeah. be a super yeah. match pair for someone to concentrate on. I have a lovely off. mealy hen off, off, of, off, of, off of them, off yeah. that pair. I love you. I'll just watch my uh, page and you'll see the pair coming up. Uh, maybe we can get a look at some of these pigeons. Uh, Morris, because I, the last time, I've actually never been here and handled a pigeon before, even though I've come to the house a couple of times. As people will know, we're doing this in the um, video in, in the house. I think it's for security reasons. You don't like uh, people, you don't bring people into the back garden, is it? Well, yeah, that's one of the reasons. And the second reason is it would take me about an hour to put away the dogs and yeah. for a so as it'd be safe for you to go out because I don't want you coming you, back in with one leg <laughs> well I wouldn't be going anywhere there's one thing I'm terrified and that's uh, dogs but it's a lovely array of uh, a lot of the I'm sure you have a lot more cards diplomas the oh, thousands of them. around the house now you might be exaggerating saying thousand <laughs> but uh, yeah well let's get a look at some of the um the p pigeons is breeding all these responsible for breeding all these pigeons. Okay, Adam, you can knock that off there. I think this is the daughter of Major, is it? That's that's her, yeah. Oh, she's a beautiful hen, yeah. She's a beautiful hen. <coughs> really, really strong eye, this hen as well. She has. <coughs> She's a very, very, very good. Just put on my glasses. I just want to have a quick look at her. Yeah, she's a really nice eyed hen. She is really nice. She's nice, and she's the mother of the first pigeon that you got in uh, Pattaya. Pattaya, yeah. And she's bred a couple of others. She's not long here, is she? Is she no. She's only she's here two years, is it? Two. Oh, she's a really, really, really classy hen, yeah. So you're going to give us one off this for the, in your match pair, yeah? Yeah. Pair to the marble cock, is it? Pair to the marble cock, yeah. Okay, right, so... Now, this this is the cock that she was made to. What's this? So he's the grandson of Elsa. Oh, Elsa. Elsa was the really... She um, was the... the she's recognised as the best long-distance hen in the world. She because she scored from Brest in France... She scored from Barcelona, and then she was in that race from Lisbon. She was the second pigeon hole. Cheney, yeah, she's a, he's a nice cock, he is, yeah. He really is, yeah. So they were the parents of the one in Pattaya. They're the parents of the pigeon in Pattaya, the two. Yeah. Now, now, I had a mate, I had a mate together earlier on. And Mike, Mike Gann is, um, Mike Gann is, uh, Got one the pigeon off these two yeah. and his breeding lot now. And I think a lad from America, Martin Ward, did he get one off the same pair? Boy, one off the same pair. I think he did, did he? Um, no, he bought, but he got one off her when she was the made into the marble cock. Yeah. Okay, but we have a look at another pigeon. Well, he's a bit, he's a bit henny looking, but hmm. take my word for it, it's a cock. <laughs> Well, he's filling eggs. Well, he, <laughs> he's, he's, about, he's about 35 children out there. He's a, 
These are class act ears, yeah. I just put on my glasses again. Yeah, he's a nice and this obviously this is direct from uh Mr. Mark and, and Miss Morris. Morris, yeah. So, so you so obviously the winner, by Mike Garnis. Yeah, the winner of the Victoria Falls race made it to the Miss Morris, the knockout winner in South Africa. Yeah, and our grandfather's responsible for his grandfather's responsible for uh uh also winning the Algarve two years in the trot. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry of the pigeon. He's a lovely cocky. He's a nice colour. You won't miss him coming in. No, no, no. Definitely so. There's actually some of the young ones out there often with the me there's a mealy hen out there, but some of the other young ones are actually nearly pure white. Mm, it's shown a lot of white. There's <clears> a lot of white in the Miss Morris pigeons, isn't there? Yeah, and and Mike taught me that um when he got the father and Miss Morris, he made the two together. And he was a blue cock. The father of Miss Morris is a blue cock. Blue white flight. Well, blue white blue, flight. Blue, I didn't realize yeah. Blue white flight. So, and he made it, Miss Morris back to the father. And he said one of the youngsters he got off him was a pure white. And Mike's granddaughter christened the pigeon Casper. Very nice. And, and uh, he said he, he's not allowed, he wasn't allowed. Send her to a one laugh race because it's 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 his granddaughter's. Now there now is that's the mother of Miss Morris. Mm. Yeah, she's a nice hand. She's big enough hand, a bit deep, isn't she? You know what I mean? But she is a is a. But nice, she's she was she's, um. She's had a breeding a lot of uh, a lot of good yeah, pigeons. Her know? father now was Paco Barcelona, the national ace pigeon. From Barcelona, mm, well she's three bred, years in a row. She's bred you really, really well. <coughs> the mother of Miss Morris. She's the mother of Miss Morris. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. She's so we were lucky to get her back. She's bred other pigeons apart from. Uh, oh yeah, like I said, the, she she's um, the first year I sent the youngsters at half of those pigeons, the Van Decker pigeons, to the Algarve. Like the six of them clocked in the final. Three in the prize money. So she's a real, real good hand, isn't yeah. she? There you go. You have something else there as well. I right? just uh, I just brought in one of the, the Cox, the Van Decker Cox. So you have a look at because this is typical like they all they all look fairly alike, so won't you they're like peas in the pod or he's molten. Heavy at the moment, but that's the that's time. What usually happens with pigeons this time of the year. They start. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's a beautiful cock. If he was malted out, he's a, he's absolutely a cracker. What's this lad? He's one of the Van Decker cocks as well. Is he ring number five? Is a five? Did he? Um, did is he the father of uh, what? What do you call the? What's the cock you call? No, cock? the 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 father of Sapsan. Yeah, is the cock that Mike Garner says. He's he's also the father of Miss Morris. Oh, he's the same father. Yeah, yeah. yeah. His, ring, a, his ring number was zero five, ended zero five zero. But all these pigeons were out of handle, Morris. They're all from long distance base pigeons. All long distance base, yeah. And that's what you need. He's a beautiful cock. I'm sure he's bred you good pigeons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he he's class. Like I said, they keep scoring and wants to keep doing that. You're happy, yeah. I'm 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 exceptionally happy. Like I said, the, the, what I prefer, where they seem to, where they seem to, to, to do really well is, is when there's a headwind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just thrive on it. They fight into it, and that's well. The has to, as I say, a lot of people have noticed your name uh, coming up time and time again. Uh, what are people in bought your pigeons at some of the auctions as well that uh, have done well with the pigeons, haven't oh, they? You know, that pigeon that way, I can't think of his name. You don't need to mention him there again. The one that was uh, dropped with the winner in the Algarve. Right? Yeah, Sapsan, yeah. He bred some a real good pigeon as well. He did, he? yeah. yeah. Did. Sure, you know, just when we were out in the Algarve there, yeah. just before COVID. Yeah. And we went up to the field, you know, the day of the final. So, Jesus. It's a wicked thing to say, but there was more people coming over to me and That was because I was with you. Yeah, probably. <laughs> but they had no they had no English. 
Yeah. They were from all over. And they shown me photographs on their phone of my pigeons that they'd bought them at auctions. And right, they were that's great. And I have to be honest, it's the thing with the Irish pigeons, people are sitting up and taking hours of the results of the Irish pigeons in these one loft races. And it, it's absolutely fantastic to see. I even see with the auctions, the uh, the English lads where they'd never, before going back, say, 10 years ago, they never would have bought the Irish pigeons. But now they're coming, all, coming over from England to get which is fantastic. Then again, we were the best at the race horses, the greyhounds, why not the pigeons? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when they're starting to realise, like for... For a small country and for for the, the, the limited amount of, of birds that we send yeah. to the one laughter races. Yeah, we, we like we, I'd be honest, we're, we're streets ahead some huh? streets ahead of some of the other countries. Oh, no doubt about it. Well, all right, Morris, I think we'll leave it at that. Uh as I said, the pair of pigeons that the match pair you're gonna put, I think it's gonna be very interesting uh to see, you know, who gets them and uh just watch my face. But I'd just like to thank you for allowing Good myself morning. a long drive down, but I think it's worthwhile. I hope someone takes bits and pieces out of the video and they, they like it. So, till the next time, goodbye. Onto the Algarve. Onto the Algarve. <laughs> Meet you in John's bar. <laughs> right. Okay.